in their right mind parks a car in a perfectly good workshop? Actually, some people... What's that? A lot of people park their car in their garage. Yeah. Psychopaths, maybe. What's up everybody, Mark here from Remarkable Woodworks and in this week's episode, I'm gonna take you on a tour of my garage workshop. All right, so in total transparency, I had every intention of cleaning up this space before I shot this video, but then I started thinking, we're all friends here, plus ain't nobody got time to be cleaning. So if you're a contractor or a builder or a carpenter, or you use tools on a regular basis, you'll probably have two sets of tools. You'll have your at-home tools, and then you'll have your on-site tools. When I made this space, I wanted to have storage for my at-home tools plus storage for my on-site tools, which I might not necessarily use every single day, but they're still easily accessible even though they're pushed way back in the nosebleeds back there. Somewhere. Hello? Hello? This is awkward. Alright, so the first stop of my workshop slash garage slash I don't know what you want to call it tour is my at-home tool storage station. I get a ton of compliments on this and people think it's really cool but the reality behind it is I'm super cheap. So I've made this, I've made this, I've, ma I've made everything out of plywood and slapped French cleats on the back of everything and just got my stuff out of toolboxes and up off the wall so I don't have to rummage through things whenever I want you know, to hang a picture. Now what I don't usually show you is what's on the other side of this wall. That's our clamping rack and what I call our garden center, question mark? So this area is just a constant work in progress, but again, me being the cheap person that I am, I've just made a bunch of half-assed clamping options so that I can store commonly used garden tools. And then down here, I'm going to clean up this area, probably put some shelves in there so that we can store some other gardening tools and whatnot. And that way we can have, you know, garbage bags, compost bags, all that fun stuff can just live in this area instead of all over the garage. And right next to the garden center is this guy. Woo! And what I mean by this guy is my clamping rack. I designed it at the home show a couple years ago and when I designed it I wanted to make sure that the shelves here could be removable and that way they'd be able to fit on my MFT ripoff table. But then I started thinking once I put a clamp up on the top row I can't remove any of these shelves. So now it just sits up on my shelf and holds about half my clamps. The other half are at the shop and actually serve a purpose. These are my just in case clamps, if you will. Moving on. Woo! You guys wanna see something super ghetto? Check out this lumber rack that I made behind me. I took two one by twos, mounted them to the wall, drilled a couple holes in them, and stuck some quarter inch metal pipe in there about six years ago and it's been holding my lumber ever since. I think it cost me about $7. Looks like a dog's breakfast, but it works. So I've got all sorts of templates here and here, and I use this space primarily to store a couple things like that, which I don't really wanna throw out, and I need a place to store it. So this is basically a graveyard of good intentions and future aspirations of projects that are yet to come. Now this is the newest space in my workshop, and it's just a space to store all of my toolboxes. Originally, I had them over here underneath my at-home tool storage because I figured keep the tools with the tools, you know what I'm saying? However, my wife parks her car in the space, you have to like ballet dance and tiptoe around the toolboxes to get it in and out of the house, so I made the decision after she told me several, several times to just find another spot for those toolboxes, which I did, 
took down this cabinet, which just stored a whole pile of garbage anyways, and whipped up this new home for my toolboxes. So for the toolbox, I decided to go with the T-Stack system from DeWalt. I love those drawers and everything is interchangeable. Plus they have labels on them. Ideally, I wanted to make this shelf big enough to house three toolboxes. However, I was kind of limited on space as well. So the solution was to put two toolboxes with the labels facing this way. And then the third toolbox I'd flip so that the label was facing the other way. That way I'm still able to see where my stuff is and I can pull it off the shelf when I need it. Which might sound like common sense, but it took me about six hours to figure that out, which is six hours that I will never get back. So there's a lot of stuff you can do in six hours. Again, super awkward. <sighs> I based the height of the first shelf off of this. This is my daughter's like Power Wheels Jeep. So it needs to be able to plug into this outlet right here. So I've just added this power bar strip so I'm still able to get power from there to source power for her Jeep. Once I had the height of this shelf, I then just built real simple boxes out of two by fours, hit into a stud on this side, again back there, and then I got super lucky when it came to these sides right here. They landed on a stud. So before I put the shelves on, I was able to toenail in on the bottom, toenail onto the top to hit into a stud, run this across, and then I have a post that runs all the way to the bottom to support this corner, and that stores all of my toolboxes. That's probably the most popular piece of content that I've ever put out. When I first started working in the space, I needed as much working surfaces as possible. So this was the first thing that I built. Then I built myself one of those Ron Polk Total Tool Stations and I used this and that workbench. And the Total Tool Station was great in terms of versatility, but storing the thing was a pain in the ass. So it lives at the other shop now. I still use it from time to time, but this thing still works just as good now as it did six years ago when I built it. The first thing you probably notice is this switch. So I used to have like a dust collection system that was attached and rigged up and I had a pylon act as a cyclone. And there used to be a switch right here, which I then moved over to here. You like that patch job? That is quality work right there. There used to be a cable that ran out of here that I jimmy rigged so that I could plug into this outlet and then it would power this one. And this is a kill switch. So basically I'd have my vacuum sit down here and then when I was standing at the front here, I could just flip this switch. It would turn that plug on and power everything. I could make my cut and then away I go. So this is a three by six surface, which I think is a perfect working surface. I'm still able to stand at the edge and reach as far back. And the only thing that it lacked for me was clamping. That's when that was born. So if you've been following me on Instagram or even on here, you've probably seen me use this table. I use it all of the time. It's just a three quarter inch piece of plywood with a bunch of holes in it. And I finally, finally have the plans for this available to download for free on my website. I'll link that below. And the only thing left for me to do today is just to put some hooks up on the wall there so I can get the MFT ripoff table, throw it up on the wall, get it off the floor, fold this back up into place, move the rest of the shit out of here and I can park my wife's car in the garage and I will not have to sleep on the couch anymore. Life is good, friends. Life is good. And that is pretty much it for this week's episode. If you like this video, please do all the things that you're supposed to do when that happens. Feel free to follow me on Instagram. I love you all equally, and I'll see you when I see you. Because dog holes are like clamps. You can never have too many. Write that down, kids. Write that down.